Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we release new episodes. Welcome back to Scary Animal Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the beautiful tropical water of Hawaii, USA. This area of the ocean has a spotted floor of seagrass for fish to hide within. Common fish include butterfly fish, tangs, parrotfish, triggerfish, and needlefish, amongst many others. This area is a local favorite for spear fishermen as it slopes gently for a distance of about 1,700 feet, ranging in depth from 1 to about 8 feet. This shallow zone of the bay offers an amazing range of fish for sportsmen, but the fish they seek to spear are not defenseless. Around 11 p.m. on July 21st of 2007, 19-year-old Tonga Luomali was spearfishing with three of his friends in the shallow waters of Kanaha Bay. The moonlight danced on the waves, creating a shimmer below the surface, which allows night hunters to find their prey, but humans use flashlights to help them see. Tonga was accompanied by three of his friends, including Braven Rivera, who was 44 years old. Tonga was a large man and stood 6 feet 1 inches tall and weighed 225 pounds of solid muscle. He was nicknamed Papio after the very first fish he speared when he began and has enjoyed it ever since, both the nickname and the sport. Tonga, Rivera, and their friends were operating their spearfishing venture for the evening utilizing a raft they pulled along with them. The raft was used to hold the fish they speared, but also worked as a place to get out and take care of any wounds they might have inflicted on themselves while they walked through the rocks and coral, sometimes found along the bottom of the bay. The men fished in the same area with each other, but far enough to have a unique fishing environment for each. Tonga wore his trademarked silver cross necklace as he searched the waters. It meant a lot to him, and he valued it as it was one of his favorite pieces of jewelry. He was also equipped with a flashlight so that he could search the dark water for precisely what he wanted. As Tonga and Braven bobbed through the seven-foot deep water for the better part of the night, they were just about ready to pack up and leave. Their friends had already made their way back to shore and were now waiting for Tonga and Rivera. On their last dive for the night, they saw a large fish flash by. It blurred within a few inches of Tonga's face and flickered as it spun around just a few feet away. Tonga maneuvered his flashlight in an attempt to see what kind of fish it was. The men thought it was a barracuda, but as Tonga looked down toward the seabed, he could see a set of eyes and a mouthful of teeth as the fish sped toward him. Suddenly Tonga felt a powerful impact in his upper abdomen. He later related it to being hit with a sledgehammer. He felt the gash open up near the full length of his gut so quickly that he thought he was already dead. He could feel the fish wiggling its way back out of his body as he was stunned and sat still. He stated that at that moment he remembered saying to himself that it was God's will, then let it be. Tonka stood still for a few seconds before the pain of the strike set in. It was excruciating as the spear-like beak severed nerves, muscles, and lacerated his liver. The men quickly surfaced after the fish speared Tonga. Rivera could see his friend was in extreme distress and immediately began pulling the raft close and trying to get his friend aboard. Tonga stated that he had been hit by something but wasn't sure just how injured he was. Rivera grabbed his flashlight and directed it toward Tonga. The light revealed an enormous wound with blood spurting from it and quickly dissolving into the sea. Given he was much smaller than Tonga, Rivera struggled to balance the raft, but Tonga was still powerful enough to lift himself up into it. Rivera then began pulling the craft toward the shore as Tonga lay inside. As soon as they made it ashore, Rivera ran to nearby houses to find help. He searched for someone walking to their car or out for a peaceful night's stroll with their dog, but couldn't find anyone. He began hoping to find a police officer, and as he glanced up, one drove around the corner directly toward him. The police officer radioed in and requested an ambulance to the street to help Tonga. Tonga was taken to Queen's Medical Center in Honolulu, having lost sensation in his right arm and leg by the time he had arrived. He was in serious condition and received 45 stitches to close the wounds in his stomach and sutures in his damaged liver. Still uncertain of exactly what kind of fish had struck him, surgeons confirmed it was a crocodile needlefish after removing a tooth from the fish still embedded in his flesh. Just to understand the crocodile needlefish a little more, they're the largest of all needlefish and can grow to around 5 feet in length and weigh about 10 pounds. They're also known to swim at speeds up to 60 kilometers per hour and can be seen soaring out of the water for great distances or skipping along the water surface to escape predators. They are frequently attracted by shining things or light. Some species have green flesh but are still edible for humans. 
They are also a favorite in aquariums around the world. Tonka's parents waited nervously for four hours in the waiting room before he was wheeled in to see them. His light mahogany skin had faded to a light tan as he was still in perilous medical condition. He was sleeping now and still recovering from the anesthesia. Down the middle of his stomach was a huge line of sutures, which held his wound closed. He remained in intensive care for three days, but eventually was released to convalesce at home. The pictures of his wounds are very graphic and will be posted in our Patreon link account linked below if you'd like to see them. Warning, these images are graphic and are not for sensitive people. Tonga says that coughing is a painful hurdle for him and that when he moves he feels like his guts are going to come out. Regarding this attack, while Tonga was in the hospital, he wrote a note to his mother telling her that he was quitting diving, but within a few days was already considering venturing back to the sea in his favorite pastime. Tonga has stated getting back in the water will be very, very scary for him and hopes that an eerie, fearful feeling will not haunt him. After getting this info and reading over the many details, I'm left with a few questions. Do you think that Tonga would have been attacked if he hadn't worn his necklace? Do you think the fish was attracted to the flashlight? If you were attacked like this, would you go back to the sea? When freak accidents happen, do you think it decreases your likelihood of experiencing anything so rare in the future? I would enjoy reading your comments, so post them in the comments section below this video and let's talk about it. Accidental attacks from needlefish are not exceptionally uncommon. In September of 2008, a 16-year-old young man was stabbed through the heart at Heilong Bay in Vietnam while diving for sea cucumber. It plunged its beak into his chest and quickly wiggled back out to escape. The young man died shortly thereafter. On Thanksgiving Day of the same year, Deborah Berry's husband, Greg, watched her tread water in Wailea Bay a short distance from shore. He next saw a one-foot-long needlefish skipping across the water in her direction. It was going so fast that it speared Deborah in the neck, wiggled itself free, and disappeared back into the sea before she even knew what was going on. The needlefish's beak penetrated completely through her neck from left to her right and pierced the skin on the far side. Its body didn't go all the way through, so it wiggled until it emerged back through the initial opening of the wound in her neck. The bill of the fish narrowly missed severing her carotid artery by only a few millimeters. Deborah lost blood very quickly due to the wound and would receive a scar that ran from ear to ear and resembled a wound that would be left if a murderer tried to slit her throat. Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. If you like this video, please consider hitting that like button and clicking on the bell icon to keep you notified of our latest video releases. Sharing our video links on your social media might help save a life and spread the fun. As a member of our human network, be careful out there because you don't want to end up on an episode of Scary Animal Attacks.